Welcome to Television Sydney News, I'm Sandra Seagian, it's great to have you with us. In this week's news, one of the state's biggest petitions presented to Parliament, an Aussie icon launches the bicentenary of the crossing of the Blue Mountains and Blues Fever hits Penrith ahead of the first state of origin clash. But first, police have seized $1.6 million worth of drugs in raids across Sydney southwest. A 28-year-old man faced court on Wednesday on 11 drug and traffic charges after police allegedly seized ice from him with an estimated street value of $1 million. A 28-year-old woman alleged by police to be the man's supplier faced court on Thursday. Police seized nearly $600,000 worth of ice, heroin, ecstasy and steroids after raids on properties at Ashfield, Cabramatta and Cabramatta West. They also discovered cash, a replica pistol and drug making equipment. Police have described the assault of a mentally disabled man at a Western Sydney train station as a cowardly act. The 36-year-old victim was followed from Central to Burwood Station on April 25 when he was grabbed around the neck and his head was repeatedly rammed into a wall before being punched and kicked while he lay on the ground. Police have released security images of a man they wish to speak with in relation to the attack. Homicide squad detectives have released security footage of a man who may be able to assist with their inquiries into the murder of 15-year-old Hayden Burns. Hayden was stabbed repeatedly in his father's motorcycle repair shop in Minchinbury last December. The man is described as being of Caucasian appearance, around 170 centimetres tall and with a medium build. The families of two people killed on the Hume Highway early this year are calling on the state government to revise major road laws. Family, friends and supporters of 23-year-old Sarah Fraser from the Blue Mountains and 40-year-old tow truck driver Jeff Clark, who were both killed by a truck after Sarah's car broke down, presented a petition to Acting Premier Andrew Stoner, containing 23,000 signatures on Tuesday. Indeed, the 23,000, 1,000 for every year of my daughter's life. The petition calls for standard breakdown lanes on major roads and new laws requiring drivers to slow down and move over when they see flashing emergency lights. It's no longer morally acceptable to sacrifice people's safety by placing them in harm's way for an extra lane of pavement. Mr Stoner says the issue will now be debated in Parliament. And of course our government um, introduced new parliamentary rules that require a proper debate of every petition containing over 10,000 signatures. So that debate uh, will happen uh, fairly shortly in the coming uh, sitting weeks of this parliament. Also supporting their campaign are more than 40 state and federal MPs, ambulance workers, the Fire Brigade, Employees Union and the New South Wales Police Association. It's an issue for us because it's our workplace. Every time we see a traffic accident, tow truck operators, paramedics, firefighters and police are at work. Uh, it's really a question of our safety and therefore community safety as well. Commuters, environmentalists and business people have slammed a decision by the federal government to fund motorway upgrades over the North West Rail Link. More than $200 million was included in the federal budget to plan for motorway upgrades. James Fiander from the Hills Transport Working Group says Hills residents commuting to the city daily will spend more than $100,000 in tolls between now and when ownership of the toll road is handed back to the government in 2046. He said the rail link would save Hills commuters about $5,000 a year and return 26 million hours of productivity to the New South Wales economy. The Institute for Sustainable Futures believes public transport should be a high priority for governments as the environmental costs of a car dependent society are too high. Sydney Hills Chamber Chief Executive Robin Baird wants land releases in the hills to be put on hold until the area gets its train line. The government has extended the public consultation period on traffic and parking changes planned around Sutherland Railway Station as part of an $11 million bus interchange project. Transport Minister Gladys Berejiklian ordered the consultation period to be extended and a public forum held after complaints from residents and business owners. Four refugee activists were banned from visiting two Tamil brothers at Villawood Immigration Detention Facility who were to be issued with honorary passports from the Aboriginal community on Monday. The brothers' visas were refused on security grounds and they were detained indefinitely. The Aboriginal activists were denied access to the centre as officials deemed they had participated in a protest by holding an original nation passport ceremony outside the facility. A Fairfield councillor has labelled the withdrawal of more than $3 million to help build a youth centre as a slap in the face. The Mounties Group has withdrawn from an agreement it signed last year to help fund the $7.5 million centre because the council opposed its application for 60 extra poker machines. The club says the centre would have been directly funded by the $3.3 million profit made from the new machines. Councillor Lawrence White has asked the council to get legal advice in relation to the agreement with the club. 
Ingleburn RSL sub-branch held its first ever anniversary service for the Battle of Coral Balmoral on Wednesday. Vietnam veterans and family members turned up to mark the 1968 battle and remember those who had lost their lives. Veteran John Perkis said it was a great service and an important event to remember. This is the first time it's ever happened at this RSL and I just hope it happens all the time because it's dedicated to those men who lost their lives. Mr Perkis said he was there to remember friends as he had not fought in Coral Balmoral but had lost half a platoon fighting in the Battle of the Long Haze. It's hard because I lost mates in Coral so uh, it's good, it's good to have this service to be those people all remembered and lost their lives and a couple of my mates. Veteran Lachlan Irvine also presented the club with a poem about what it was like to lose a mate at war. Iconic Aussie actor Jack Thompson has helped launch celebrations marking the bicentenary of the crossing of the Blue Mountains. Mr Thompson and members of the St Mary's and District Historical Society dressed in period costume for the launch at Penrith to draw attention to the celebrations due to start next year. A series of events is planned for towns spread across the Blue Mountains to commemorate Blacksland, Wentworth and Lawson's historic trek in 1813. The crossing the Blue Mountains was very important in the history of New South Wales. Crossing of the Blue Mountains opened the gateway to the west. Um, it opened much grazing land, horticulture and agricultural wise. The, the significance of that is because of the growing colony in New South Wales, they couldn't produce enough food to survive. Descendants of the original explorers also joined in the launch, including Wendy Blacksland, the great-great-great-great-granddaughter of Gregory Blacksland. I think it's really interesting to remember that if you're talking about great-great-great-great-grandfather, there are 72 people at that particular level back there who created you. And only one maybe has a famous name, but everyone is as important. And I think, for instance, the convicts who went with Blacksland, Wentworth and Lawson are just as important to the success of it and yet we only know the name at present of one of them. And in sport, the New South Wales State of Origin team hosted a skills clinic for juniors from the Blacktown City and Minchinbury Junior Rugby League sides on Monday. The team spent the first half of the week in Penrith plotting, preparing and promoting their upcoming campaign. The first State of Origin clash will be held at Etihad Stadium in Melbourne on Wednesday. He's green by name and green in experience, but Toby Green continues to turn the faces of his opponents red each week. After five games, the Greater Western Sydney Giants recruit is ranked first for handballs, first in total disposals and in kicks a game. His game against Carlton in round five was his most impressive performance yet, notching up 28 disposals, 16 kicks and nine marks. Green says he doesn't want to leave Sydney when his contract expires in 2013. Josh Elston recently won gold in the 50 metre freestyle, backstroke and butterfly and silver in the 50 metre breaststroke at the Special Olympic State Swimming Championships. Elston, who has Down syndrome, beat a health battle last year to get back in the pool to achieve his medal haul. And he also competes in athletics, soccer and basketball, but swimming is his forte and the difficult butterfly is his favourite stroke. David Varankovic is hoping to get snapped up by the A-League competition. The Westfield Sports High student is a goalie for Bonnie Rig, but that didn't stop him from scoring a goal in his side's 3-1 win against Blacktown. His short-term goal is to continue playing well for Bonnie Rig, starting in Saturday night's local derby against Marconi, who are coming off a 3-1 loss to Sutherland. Long-term, he says, his main goal is playing in the A-League. And the world's smallest man was carried into Granville by backpack this week to meet children at Black Cell Street Public School. Chandra Bahadu Dangi from Nepal is 54.6 centimetres tall. He was brought to Australia by radio duo Fitzy and Whipper. Dangi fielded a number of questions from the children with the help of a translator. And that's all the news we have time for. For more information on any of these stories, pick up your local Fairfax newspaper. I'm Sandra Siegian and we'll see you next time.